Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Vic's Garage. In today's episode, I'm going to do a review on this little thing here. It's the Blue Driver OBD, OBD2 code reader. Um, if you have a 1996 or newer vehicle, then this thing right here is a must have. Um, this is probably one of the best bang for your buck code readers you can buy. You know, it's not as good as, or not as cheap as those $20, $30 ones that are floating around out there. But the features on this little thing go way above and beyond. Uh, retails for about a hundred bucks or so uh, from Amazon. So uh, it's not cheap, but it's definitely not expensive. You know, and if, and if you're a professional, you're gonna have your thousand dollar plus code reader. But for the average DIYer, this little thing is a uh, it's pretty handy to have. So let's get into the review and uh, see what you think. Okay. So first thing we gotta do with your blue driver device is it plugs in the OBD2 port. So every 1996 or newer car should have one of these. For the Dodge Ram, it's underneath, and you'll see the blue light is now on. So now what I'm gonna do is pair it with my phone. Just get in the truck here. And then after I pair it, I'm gonna put the key into the run position. Okay, so I'm gonna pair the device. Now it's connected. I'm gonna open the app, just search for it. There we go. Put the key in the run position. Let it connect to the blue driver. And while it's connecting, you'll see the, the dongle's got a flash, it's got a blue light, and it's got a blink on and off as it connects. And there we go. Okay, so now that we're in the app, you can see Compared to, let's say, the, the cheap $20, $30 code reader that you would buy from Princess Auto or Harbor Freight, this has got way more options to it. So we'll just go through some of these menus here. You can see how it works. We'll go with the read codes first. Now, because I have a check engine light code on with the truck right now with my coolant valve, it's going to show us pretty quickly here. So you got multiple options. You can do just the check engine light, which is probably the equivalent to your cheap tool. It'll just spit you out the code. It's really fast. And then you have like the common dash light, which will check your ABS, SR, SRS, and other sensors. And the comprehensive is all your vehicle modules. So that's going to be everything from the powertrain, the transmission, the door modules, everything. That's going to be the most in-depth, and it's going to take the longest to do. So we'll just do the check engine light first, and I'll show you that. And it'll probably take a couple seconds. And there you go. That's my mileage. You can see, like it gives you the the big codes really quick. So the P26AB, the coolant valve, like I was saying. And what's nice about this, excuse my voice, it's like I got a frog in it. Um, when you click on it, it gives you the common repairs. So the top report of fix is reprogram the engine control manual or module. I know it's not my module, it's the valve. So for me, I'm gonna do replace engine uh, engine coolant valve, which is another one of the repairs frequently reported. And it does link you to Amazon where you can get some of these parts. Now I bought this part off Amazon. So um, let's see if I click on replace coolant flow valve, control valve, let's see if it, if it finds it. No, doesn't look like it's gonna pop up. It's here, I bought it off Amazon, but you know, sometimes it'll work. Go back to the blue driver and then after you do you can report your fix the part number and whatnot and submit it so that this data gets shared and you know helps build the database for other people now if we wanted to do the more detailed one we'll uh we will all system modules and see what pops up now this can take three four maybe five minutes um it's pretty in depth and it takes a bit so i'm just going to time lapse throw a little elevator music on the background for you and we'll come back to it when it's done.
Okay, so you know, there we go. It takes a bit of time, but it's done. And we can see some of the more uh, other modules that don't come up with just a check engine light, like the front control module, uh, humidity sensor, bus assembly internal, um, radio frequency hub, trailer brake control module. So obviously a few other small things. Um, we'll look at this one here. So it says repaired humidity sensor wiring harness, common fix. I don't even know where this sensor is. I am going to just clear this code and show you how that works. And, um, you know, so it's to clear it. It's just a matter of hitting the delete. Confirm clear. Okay. And done. So you can see how easy it is to work through this. Um, clear codes is just another option to clear through the codes. It's basically the same thing as the read codes menu. Um, save reports is handy. You can do live data logging or whatever and export it to here. And then you can take these reports and review them on a computer and stuff like that. So you get to, to review some of the data in more detail. Uh, freeze frame. Now freeze frame, well, free, it'll give you the data at the moment the check engine light code came on so if we go to freeze frame we'll see the diagnostic trouble code that caused the free frame data let's do an all scan here so for the p26ab code um, here you go it's all the data so engine load was 100 percent of the time it was 28 degrees um, manifold pressure speed 18 kilometers an hour um, runtime was only 16 seconds so it sounds like I probably was just starting the truck and starting to get moving but this gives you another snapshot into what the vehicle was doing at the moment the code happened so it might help you diagnose the pro the problem we'll go back smog check smog checks another great one this will if, if you live in an area where you have to do emissions testing this will tell you right away if you'll pass or not before you even go so obviously I have a check engine light on I'm going to fail it, but we're going to do it. I'll show it to you. So scan. And there you go. Smog chest failed. Check engine light. Confirm trouble code. But you can see all the different parameters checked in the smog test. I got no misfires. Fuel system's fine. EGR, et cetera, et cetera. You know, this can potentially help save you time and money. If you have to pay for every time you have to go do a test, well, at least you can test it before you go, fix the issues, and then not have to deal with it. Uh, mode 6. So mode six is kind of like a, it's a self-test diagnostics that the, the car will perform on all its sensors. So it'll give you the high lows and the ranges for all these individual sensors. We'll see it here. And, <clears throat> excuse me. So here, this one's the oxygen sensor monitor bank. Uh, it's done its test and it's passed. You can see the minimum value, maximum values, and the value um, it did in its test. You know, all these different sensors. You see there's some yellow ones. Um, misfire tests. So, obviously, the truck's got to be running for something like that. It's not running right now. Uh, mill status. Mill status gives you the check engine light data. So, like, how long the car's been running with that check engine light. As you can see... <laughs> I've let this one go for a while because uh, it wasn't critical. So 13,000 kilometers, I got to get this fixed. I have the part, I'm going to fix this and it'll be in another video. But you can see it gives you some of that, that data that again, could be proved useful. Vehicle info is another nice tab. It's another nice option of this thing. Uh, you can obviously you can get your vehicle specifications. Most of you guys who are following me probably know your own vehicle specifications, but gives you all that data there. Maintenance schedule. This truck is not supported under the maintenance schedule, but I've seen it with other people. It'll tell you um, oil change intervals and other uh, other data that's part of the maintenance schedule. Um, they're always updating this app too. So just because it's not here now doesn't mean it won't be in the future. Uh, potential recalls. Maybe you've missed a recall. You've noticed an issue with something. You could check. Oh, you know, I've noticed something with my electrical system. Um, let's hear. Oh, there's a recall. Boom, wiring recall. And then it'll give you the details. So... This will help you if you may potentially miss one of these recalls, right? 
Like I knew that there was a, a latch and lock one for the tailgate and there it is, latch locks, tailgate latch. I've got this fixed, but the recall data is here. And then service bulletins, again, it's very similar to the recall data. Just other things that Chrysler may be recommending or other things, right? Like bulletins here, back over prevention. You know, there you go. Common fixes and, and stuff like that. Go all the way back to the main menu. Now, um, I will go through the live data now. The live data is really nice too. So if you're tracking an, uh, an issue here, you can set the parameters of what you want to monitor, right? So here's all the supported uh, sensors and stuff that it can monitor live. Uh, you can run up to, I think, five in total before it tells you to, like, hey, chill out, buddy. You don't need to monitor more than that. So I've got whatever one's active right now. I'm going to start the truck. And here you go. You can see it's giving me the live data as it's happening right now. Fuel rate, RPMs, injection timing. And you can change these two on the fly. So let's say I want to turn off engine runtime. Go and I want to do mass airflow and coolant temperature. So I have five now and it's giving me that live data. You know, and I think, let's see here if I pick a six one. I don't, engine load. There it is. Don't do more than five, dummy. There you go. So, and then the last tab is really the service tab. You can see. Oil reset, TPS sensor, TPMS sensor reset, and others, right? It, it's going to be all dependent on your vehicle and what it's supported or not. But some of those options are here in the, in the tool. Last but not least is the more. Um, this is like the kind of the support tab. You can do your updates from here. The contact us. Um, you know, they actually have a good support network too. Like I called them because I was trying to do a forced regen. And... Someone answers the phone, they go through it with you, and obviously it, it wasn't supported with uh, the diesel, the force regen, but like if you have issues with this thing, there's actually someone there that's gonna support you through this. So this is a very handy tool. Um, YouTube, if you go to the YouTube page, it takes you to all these how-to videos and stuff like that. Um, you know, frequently asked questions. There you go. Like, they've got all this stuff very very useful tool user manuals right here right in the app how to do repair reports sharing reports so if you have a 1996 or newer vehicle and you intend to do repairs on it yourself this is a must-have i don't think any of the other ones in the market are as good as the blue driver so that's it guys that's uh the blue driver in a nutshell uh, as you can see, like the options this thing has for the price you pay for it is, is pretty damn good. Uh, you don't get that in any other code reader and a lot of these options and functions only come in those more expensive ones that are going to cost you significantly more. Uh, works with Android, Apple, so uh, just about everyone's going to have a phone that this will work with. And, you know, it's, it's just easy to buy, easy to use, and you can't beat it. Like I don't know of other ones out there that are as good or as powerful as it. You know, if you have other suggestions, uh, throw it in the comment section. If you have one, let me know your experiences below. And if you do buy one because of this review, let me know as well. I'm gonna have a link to it in the uh, video description. And if you choose to buy it from there, that's great. Uh, it's also available at Walmart. Uh, and yeah, that's about it, man. There's not, there's not much bad I can say about it. Uh, it would be nice if it had a like support for the DPF regen and stuff like that for my truck. But, you know, they're always adding stuff. So down the road, maybe it will become a feature, but as of now, it's not. Other than that though, I really have no complaints. If you guys enjoyed this video as always, like, subscribe, and share it. It goes a long way. And I'll see you in the next one. Hopefully uh, we'll get this charger going along again. I got some frame rails coming for the rear. I'm gonna pick those up soon. And I'm almost gonna have all the parts to get this back end going. So once we've got everything gathered, we can pick up where we left off and continue restoring this car. Till then guys, take it easy. See you at the next video.